on the Hey, what's up, guys? It's Anthony here, um, also known as the BBW Lover, aka the Green Boy, aka oh, I need to stop talking now. <laughs> and I'm joined by. <laughs> what's up, guys? I'm Nathan Desa. I'm Vulcan Silver on Anime Secrets. I'm also the Silver Knight on Otaku Sentai Digital Ranger. People also know me as the Chocolate Chaser and the Daring Diesel, and I've also and I've already uh, crushed Ronald on this, so I'm not even going to start doing that. <laughs> we're also joined by. I am Rizwan, uh, also known as Commander Drake of Anime Secrets, the Blue Commander of Otaku Sentai Digital Ranger, and all around general badass and the Indian Cajun to some of y'all apparently. And I'm joined by. All right, y'all, y'all done with y'all's childish stuff. It's, it's uh, time. It's time for us to go to the the main meat and bones of the conversation. Okay. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> it's your boy, Ronald Budsy, aka the Green Terrier, aka the Colossal Countdown, aka <laughs> Mister You Know It, aka the the Black Fiend, aka Mr. Mr. Super Califragilistic Espialidocious, wow. aka Mr. Styles on him, aka the Stubborn Escape King. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see how long he'll go for at this point. Okay. Are, are you, you done? Want me to, you, are, y'all are want you me done? to keep going? Are you done? Yeah, we'll hey, fish, are you done? <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're done. You stop talking. <laughs> hey, you don't get any do-overs on this. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, welcome to another episode of Tokyo Secrets. We're here today to review Kamen Rider Ghost Episode 15, The Stubborn Escape King. Which which was my AKA, by the way. Yeah, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're you're yep, not yeah, a king, yeah. my friend. You're nothing like a king. <laughs> so don't don't even try. You're just gonna lose the game. Which, by the way, a subtle prince. You, no, you're like a peon. Don't you, prince. <laughs> so, uh, just to give you, uh, it's been a while since we've uh, done these. Uh, Kamen Rider Ghost episode review said so it just cut a long story short with the pet like the, the previous two episodes that we did was a two parter where to cut a long story short uh, Takaru got some new uh, form I think it was called like uh, Ryoma Sakamoto I think his name was uh, he got a new Damashi that he uses as, in his Tokam boost form and yeah that's it yeah um as you all know, Takaru was given a second chance to try and get all 15 icons together to come back to life because he's still dead. Mm-hmm. And now instead of like, just collecting, he has to connect to the souls of all the icons he can. So he's on a mission to connect to all the icons and become their friends. Because that's, tru- that, that, that's, that's what a true bro would do. Although, oddly enough, I mean, like, like oddly enough, this time, whenever, like, they're talking about, like, how many days remain for him to collect the icons, I mean, the first time around, they were kind of taking, like, ten or something days off with every episode. This time, they're moving at a pretty steady pace. Like, every episode, he only loses a day, so... Yeah. It's been, like, two, three days per episode so far. Like, not too drastic. Like, I'm like what they did the first time around, which was... Oh, dude, the first time around stressed the crap out of me. I don't even know how to explain that to you. I'm just kind of like, how are you going to get these icons this fast? Like, the days are are passing by so fast. Yeah. Yeah, really. So, it's it's being paced better. And uh, the only real thing to note about the previous episode that kind of relates to this is that... uh, there was a scene in which, like, uh, they were fighting Alon, or however we pronounce his name, uh, Alan. and yeah, Alan. and at one point uh, Makoto tried to use this one icon, but it still wasn't. So, that's when we move on to this episode. Mm-hmm. So, um, now that we have, you know, Takaru learning how to communicate with the icons, 
he set his goals on trying to communicate with more of them as he can. And, uh, at the same time, they're also trying to, like, start, they're also trying to celebrate the fact that Canon is back from the dead. So they're all having takoyaki, which, by the way, for the record, that stuff looks really good. Like, it really does. I really, really want some takoyaki now. Takoyaki yeah, I've actually had now. I actually had someone I went to a Japan festival, and it was really awesome. So yeah, you should have that. Ah, uh, you've had it already, and I haven't. I hate you. I know. You're just, uh, you're just not a good person anymore. I know I'm not a good person. So. Freaking, I hate you. Okay. Anyway, I'm gonna stop being a weeaboo now. Okay. Um. So yeah, they're like, what? No, I was just saying sarcastic way like, love you too, man. That's yeah, it. Thanks. So. I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, so while that's all going on, they're celebrating like Canon being back, a new Gundari flies into Tokyo, like, hey guys, I'm here to wreck your stuff. What you gonna do about it? And Mikado arrives and they both Mikado and Canon uh thank Takaru for like all the help and everything. And She's really ha like they meet their former like friend Grandma Fumi, and she's super excited to see Mikado and Canon again. And she said that today all the foods on her just for old times' sake for all everyone being together again like reunited, and it's great because takoyaki is life. I have determined this. There is no turning back on that now. Um, but yeah, um, it. It's like ta uh, Takaru and Mikado are talking about uh, the icons, and uh, Takaru asks, "What's the icon that he's holding, Mikado?" And it turns out to be Houdini, which is the icon for this episode. And we've seen this one before plenty of times, actually. Yeah, we've seen it around, but we never actually saw it in use. And yeah, cause... Mikado explains that he can't ever connect it for whatever reason; like, he can't use it because it won't respond to him. We can probably just assume that Makoto uh, got this uh, icon like before the events of the series, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I mean, obviously it was like because since we never like saw this icon be created before, we can assume that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Takeda tells Makoto that they should become friends, Houdini and him, so that they can so they can partner up and fight and all that. Basically, and do what basically he's telling him that hey, do what I did when I, you know, want icons to help me out. Yeah, he's basically saying do what I do with Ryuma and like you'll be fine. And Makata, Makata's like, uh, I don't know about that, buddy. Uh, like, yeah, uh, like, the, uh, like at first I thought this was kind of dumb, but then I started to think back on how, you know, back back when back when Makoto was uh was. Uh, an antagonist, a dick? he would always be, huh? A dick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> back when he was, that he he always he always referred to um, how he used the icons as commanding them instead of uh, instead of asking for their help. So, mm -hmm. th so it does make sense now that uh, he'd have this issue with Houdini. Well, yeah, I mean, why he would be really elusive as a magician, you know? And, you know, he would also probably be, and it explains why he's so lucky now, because he's like, well, to be honest, they treated these guys like dick, like jerks before, so maybe they don't want to be my friend. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Which kind of brings up a question. Why Why are, why are Nobunaga and Tutankhamen okay with it, but not Houdini? It's probably because of personality issues, probably not personality wise, because you have to remember, um, both, both, uh, well, with Tuncommon is, uh, he's, he's basically like a Egyptian Egyptian kid. Yeah, Egyptian kid, so I mean, like, I guess he probably didn't care, he's like, ah, well, he's, oh, he's, 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 he's strong. Like that. He's, he's a grown man, he's a freaking warlord. Jack's determination? <laughs> I guess. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, this kid's got guts. I'll, I'll, I'll help him out. But Houdini, he ain't putting up with that. He ain't, he ain't putting up with that. He's like, nope. Yeah. 
Because he's like, I'm not having any year crap. And he's kind of like he's kind, he's kind of like that girl that like you know she's not he's not <laughs> I know this is gonna sound uh, funny but like she's like he's like one of those girls that like you know doesn't like to be like just hit and quit it. <laughs> you kind of just want to, have to take him on a date person before you can like you know <laughs> use them <laughs> where you can do stuff. Is the icon playing hard to get? Is that you're trying to say? Yes, basically. Yeah. You know, you know that makes too much sense now. Actually, <laughs> when I'm th- when I think about what happens later on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so back at the lab, um, Takaru is trying to figure out how to talk to Masasi. And Yuri sends all like, yo, you should be more like Onari trying to talk to Goemon. And I'm just looking at it like, Sots fired. Holy, oh my god, that's terrible. Oh. When you have to, when you have to like compare yourself to Onari to make a point, that like, you know you've hit rock bottom. You, you messed up. Mm-hmm. You done messed up hardcore. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with the nice character. It's just that, like, well, at first he was seen kind of he seemed very annoying, but he grew, he grew better by that sort of rest. Yeah, we don't yeah. hate Ozari as much as we used to now. I mean, he, oh, yeah, he's way better now. I always liked Onari. Mm-hmm. <laughs> me too. Onari is actually, you know, what? Onari's growing like, on me a little bit. He. He is like one of the most active, like besides um, a car, of course. He's like one of the most active uh, side characters I've ever seen in my life. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. he's always doing something, and I like that. Yeah. So, uh, so, while, so while they're at the lab, Tommy uh, is still curious about like uh, what Makoto is, you know, trying to do because you know he's still refusing to tech to like, uh, you know technically work with the car like I don't know it's a complicated thing because he still needs to quote unquote settle things and, uh, and what and Takaru was also uh, wondering about like uh, this whole gamma hell thing like he's like more curious about that and uh, so then that, so while that happens uh, Gramps uh, Grandpa sent him but we're just going to call him Gramps still uh, mm-hmm. he and Yurithin pop up and uh, you know they're wearing pajamas that make them look like the devil for some reason and uh, and Akari uses that spider lantern to make them visible, and uh, and this is actually the first time that Onari uh, sees uh, clamps actually, so that's kind of interesting to note. Yeah, nice first impressions. Mm-hmm. Like you're dressed up like the devil, so mm-hmm. yeah. and you're and you're appearing to a monk. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's just kind of awkward, man. But uh. So, uh, Sinan gives them, you know, their standard clue of the day that Houdini is the next luminary. And then they leave. Uh, so, then after that, uh, Shibuya and Narita, they come down and they tell them that the Gundari is attacking. And, uh, you know, and then Onari, strangely enough, he says that he's going to be the one that'll take care of this. Like, he's going to take care of the Gundari. Uh, okay. Uh, props to Onari, no Onari. Uh, but, uh, so, while this is happening, uh, Makoto and Kanon, they're visiting, uh, Grandma Tumi again, and, you know, they're thanking him for the delicious takoyaki. And, uh, then after that, uh, Alan comes in. Dun dun dun. And then, uh, so, simply enough, when Alan appears, uh, Canon, Canon actually recognizes him, and she's calling him Alan Sama. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, obviously she recognizes him from the Gama. So we could assume that they have, like, some kind of friendly relationship or something. Like, I like that turns out. But, uh. Which is surprising. Yeah. I mean. But anyway, uh, so, you know, Canon wants to, uh, talk with Alan, you know, like, hey, Alan, maybe we should, uh, catch up. But Alan's like, uh, Sorry, Cannon, I gotta talk with uh, your brother. So, uh. Huh? So, Alan's talking to uh, Makoto, 
And, uh, oh my gosh, he banged his sister. Dun dun uh, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Alan. But uh, <laughs> no, but really, but really, he's just uh, saying that he had like he's just threatening to like, you know, he needs to uh, like, like he's pretty much wanting Makoto to come back to him, and he's saying like, okay, you you come back, or well, I'm gonna separate you and Cannon for good. Uh, but you know, Makoto's like, no. Like I'm gonna stay with Canon and uh, you know, Takaru and my friends because you know I'm a human and Alan's really disappointed. So then Jobert, uh, because we we forgot to mention this uh, one scene, uh, like a scene prior. Uh, Alan, long story short, he revived Jabert. Uh, he was like this Gamma general that came in and then he was defeated like by the uh, Telcom yeah. boots for Jabbert or Zabel or whatever. Yeah, um, um, his actor is also uh, what, what used to be a Geki Ranger too. Yep, he was a uh, Geki Chopper. Uh, and looking back at it, he was actually kind of funny in that scene. In that scene, yeah. but uh, kind of funny that he actually like he's more serious in this one. Like he, I think it was in an episode of Tokyo Ranger too. Although I'm not sure about that one. Uh, no. So uh, he pops in, and uh, you know we get the henshin, and you know it's Makoto versus Jobert, and uh, Job. Okay, I'm just maybe I should just say Jobert. Like that's another one where you can't figure out how to pronounce. Joe says Jabber, so I say Jabber. So uh, oh, uh, one second, someone. Uh, okay, okay, sorry about that. Uh, but uh, so. Uh, they're fighting, and you know, Javel, Javel, because you know, apparently, I guess we're bombing him has made him a bit more stronger. He's able to uh, easily overpower Makoto, even when he uses his uh, King Tut form. And uh, you know, Makoto's buried in rubble, and uh, then Kanem shows up, uh, and Takaru comes in, and he henshins, and although he henshins straight to Newton, uh, yeah. That's, the cool thing I love about uh, Common Riders whenever they like henshin straight to one of their alternate poems. Uh, Takaru manages to, uh, you know, defeat Javel. Uh, okay, he knocks him away to uh, get Makoto out. Uh, and But then Javel gets back in the fight and uh, he pits, like, he does one of those typical things where, uh, you know, the hero gets uh, hit so hard that he's forced to defend henshin. And, uh, Takaru uses his uh, boost mode and then uses Goemon to uh, get the upper hand, and then, but then you know when the fight is just about to get interesting, Alan comes in and he tells Javel to stand down. And uh, but of course, because we need to heighten the drama for this episode, uh, oh well, yeah, mm-hmm. Javel takes cannon with him. Yeah. So, so it's a know, wonder so, why she's still nice to him. Yep. Although we all know why Alan took Cannon, like had him take Cannon, we all know why he did. Yeah, we all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, so they're searching for Cannon. You know they can't find her. I mean, Job Wilson's uh, like Dakota a message. Uh, you know, challenging him basically, and uh, you know, in order to gain the strength to defeat Javel, Makoto's trying to get the Houdini icon, and uh. But instead, when he tries to use the Houdini icon this time, uh, Houdini wraps Makoto up in a bunch of chains and then takes control of his bike. So, yeah, things are getting, like, Houdini's acting pretty crazy. Right? Uh, They're getting along just fine. They're going to be best friends. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yay. <laughs> so, yeah, now it's uh, Makoto versus his uh, Houdini bike. And, uh, and, uh, you know, Makoto is like, you know, he's obviously, you know, he does this thing like, you know, Takaru, stay out of this fight because, you know, I want to save Cannon myself. And, you know, as he's training, uh, you know, he manages to hop onto the bike despite being wrapped in chains. And then after that, uh, they head to where, uh, Jabo was keeping Cannon. And, uh, and Makoto and Jabo pinch in again to fight. And, uh, you know, Takaru wants to enter the fight, but, you know, then he stops himself because he wants to keep his promise. You know, even though Akari is, like, saying that, uh, 
you know, that's stupid, you know, Makoto's kind of just being a little arrogant, so he's not completely right. But, you know, Makaro, you know, Takaru was like, I believe in Makoto, because, you know, he's, uh, even though at the time, like, he's uh, gripping the Musashi icon and doesn't realize that it's glowing. I remember that right now. And, uh, so after that, uh, Makoto's getting overpowered again, you know, Javel's getting bored and summons a Gondari, and he actually fuses with it, because apparently Gamma can do that. And, uh, you know, Onari arrives, he was following the Gundari. Uh, so yeah, you did a pretty good job of destroying that Gundari, Onari. I mean, good job. I mean, but, look, Onari tried his level best, okay? But, like what can a simple street monk do against a friggin' Gundari? I mean, he can take a super heavy I mean, shot. He's got a, huge... a Gundari with hey, man, like a he was... huge dragon. Against a bald monk with no special skills. Hey man, he, he was he was going for that rules of nature mm -hmm. moment. Rules of nature. Da, 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 he was about to slay da, da, da. that thing. <laughs> so yeah, but obviously the yeah. plot got in the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because whatever the you're that's the thing about Tekken Seven too. You're as strong as the plot requires you to be. So <laughs> much. So, yeah, I mean, this, I mean, it's this kind of contrivances where like uh, a common rider is overpowered. It's like common rider Kugo Rising Ultimate can get defeated by this monster just to make Double come in and easily fight because ah. they have to make Double look good. But uh, right. but anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, Javel's much more powerful, and you know he defeats Makoto again, and a building falls on top of him. Well, okay, like bubble from the building. <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> would be, he would probably be dead at this point. But uh, so you know, Takaru is fine. We had enough, and he henches the beast. And uh, but of course, even he's having a tr uh, trouble fighting because you know he's trying to fight a flying dragon. Uh, you know, uh, Takaru tries to get Yurisen to uh, summon Captain Ghost, and Yurisen is like. Takara, why do you have to call me so much? Like, I mean, like, why do you have to call me so much? And, uh, okay. yeah, you were some kind of complaint about that. And, to uh, be fair, he did get summoned more often than not this episode. Yes, but uh, he, yeah, but Takara would probably need Captain Ghost right now. Yeah, but why, why, I, 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 I agree with the portal guy. Instead of making Yurisen summon Captain Ghost, why can't Takaru just like have a magical incantation that says, "Yo, Captain Ghost, come help"? Because Captain yeah. Ghosting is in the first place. I mean, that just seems like a waste. At least of time. that's what it's implied. Yeah, it really is. I mean, look, Yurisen's is trying to you know do different stuff. Like at one point he's trying to make a sour, another time he's like trying to chill out, wear a it's costume, funny. be cool, and anytime he's like trying to chill out, Takaru's like. Yurisen! 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 Yeah, so I, I, I get that. I get that. Yeah. yeah it maybe doesn't should, like... help that when Yurisen is there, he gets whacked around by people just blasting things and he gets whacked into the sky, you know? It's like this <laughs> poor little guy yeah, he's trying to live his life. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. Like a Javel shoots at Yurisen and just gets blasted out of the sky. Although, yeah. one of the. Like, they should do this more often where, like, you know, uh, Takaro calls Yurisen, and then, like, maybe Yurisen is, like, is, like, we're in a bathing suit, like, and has, like, a Hawaiian shake in his hand, and be like, hey, I was at the beach, what the hell, man? <laughs> so, I can see that. Uh, but, <clears throat> so, Yurisen's gone, so, yeah, they're, like, Captain Ghost, that's not gonna happen. And, uh, so, Takaru, Akari, and Onari, they're trying to keep themselves safe because, you know, the flying dragons just like flying, like going around all over the place, like shooting at them and causing explosions. Then Makoto gets up, uh, he gets out of the rubble, and he asks Houdini to help. And finally, because, you know, Houdini's now in the mood, he decides to help Makoto. And uh, he bursts out of the rubble, Makoto gets out of the chains, and then. Makoto was able to activate the uh, Houdini icon and use it to uh, activate his Houdini Kamashi, where he uh, which which to to everyone's surprise, the Houdini icon or well, <laughs> the 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 
Houdini hoodie was actually the machine hoodie this entire time. Yep, yeah. bike. His bike becomes the hoodie, which is a pretty so, cool. It's really cool, actually, because Houdini's hiding in plain sight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So magic. Uh, what do you believe in magic, magic, magic? Anyway, so yeah, apparently the motorcycle is Houdini. Mikado merges with the motorcycle to become Spectre Houdini mode. And with th this new suit, he can fly. So he flies up, saves Cannon from uh, Zabel. Zabel's like, yo, you now have the power to fly, and you got Houdini. Way to go. And Mikado uses Houdini powers to easily defeat Zabel. And it's all really Hakuna Matata. Like, he can even poof. Yeah. And Alan's watching from above, like, son of a. I hate you. And then he leaves. Gee, and, I uh, wish I could be a common writer like you. Yeah. <laughs> so while Mikado and Cannon walk away from after everyone's, like, you know, said their congratulations, like, yeah, we did it! Uh, the Masasi icon, which, as we noted earlier, was glowing, actually sucks up Takaru into the uh, icon itself, and Takaru comes face to face with Masasi, who tells him that he's to try talking to the other luminaries with the same sincerity that he talked to Masasi, and then Masasi will, of course, continue fighting for Takaru, and mm -hmm. back at the lab, good old Grams is there talking to Papa Tenkuzi about how his son's taking another step forward into the plan and um it's kind of ominous like Gramps has the old plan out like he had to do all the stuff he's done so far to get to this point which is kind of like yo wait you wanted Takaru to have to redo the entire quest again from the beginning with the 15 icons to get to this point you planned this out it is all proceeding as I have foreseen now mm. Okay. Exactly as planned. Hang on. No, no, no. Guys, guys, guys. Nathan? What? That was really spot on. As a it really was. Palpatine. That was. It was better than mine. Perfect. I'm like, what? That was perfect. Like, you are Palpatine now. <laughs> okay. Like, that, that was I'll... amazing. Okay, wow. I'm flattered. Thank you. <laughs> but, yeah. Hey, I'll take that order. I'll be the Emperor who rules the universe for two decades. I mean, it gets the bonus. More subs, in. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, by the way, the episode ends with uh, someone in the Ganma world holding the Necrom icon. Dun dun dun. Next we time on Kamen Rider Ghost, Necrom appears. Spoilers. Everybody already knew that Necrom was coming in. Yeah, we all knew this was the happening. Cool. The cool. I mean, we already knew that Spectre was going to be a character before the series even began. So. I know, right? <laughs> That's a weird thing about Toei. Like, they love spoiling these new writers before they even appear. Yeah. Same thing with the Sentai. I mean, yeah, they, I mean they, we already know who Jew Ogre Six Mind is going to be. Yeah. Wait, we know who the uh, character is? No, not the character. Oh, no. What the suit looks like and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't even think the series had begun by that point either, so... You know, the series hasn't even begun yet. We just knew that he was going to be the thing. So... I'm very impressed with the episode. I actually liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was a good episode. I really loved the Houdini icon powers a lot. That was, like, my favorite part, I think, of the episode. It was good teaching Makoto some humbleness. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, Makoto is still my favorite character in the show, so him getting an episode all to himself is already a plus for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. Same. And, um, not to spoil too much for you, Nathan, but there's a couple more like this in the future where Makoto getting a lot of airtime. Yeah, I can, I mean, I can see that. I mean, yeah. Like, give the secondary writer some focus. Oh, no, not just have. He needs a lot of focus, actually. Oh, yeah, he's great. I mean, even Forze is that, and Forze isn't really that big. He isn't even really that big now that I look back at it, but... Yeah. 
But anyway, yeah, I like uh, I also like uh, like how they bring in Grandma Boomy into the show to establish like their relationship with kids. I mean, that's uh, I mean, it kind of reminds me of like the good stuff from Tokyo with how they were kids a little bit. Like you know, not to compare this to Tokyo because like this you is always dare like, compare this to Tokyo or get out of my group. Don't ever do that again. You you'll be the son if you do that again. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have just, failed this Tokyo Secrets. <laughs> Bill took yeah, I'll just, yeah, just give my empire and have it blow it up with the Death Star. I don't care. <laughs> Alright, Palpatine, that's going way to your head now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but yeah, I do like how they go further into like their relationship as kids, because we only got like one flashback, which even then was really supposed to just establish that Takaru sometimes screws up. So, yeah. yeah. But, uh, the, the only thing I don't, I mean, I don't like how, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I was kind of weirded out by, like, how you bring back Javel for this one episode just to, like, have him destroy it. I mean, is Javel just yeah. an enemy that is used to, like, give you all these big power-up modes? Because keep in mind, you know, he was destroyed uh, when Takaru first used Tokam Boost. Now he's being destroyed again by, you know, what's supposed to be, like, a super form for Spectre. So, oh, the it, freaking it, punching bag. Look, yeah, like yeah. If that's like not the lives. last one either. Mm. Yeah. We'll warn you that this is not the last time that happens to me. Yeah. This is, the not, this is not the last time you'll see me. I'll mm -hmm. return again. More powerful than last time. And more powerful and than I'll get time before that act. And I get beaten again. <laughs> but yeah. Um. Any final thoughts on this? Anything else you want to go over? Because I'm pretty much out of things to say. Mm. The only thing I want to notice that I like Houdini's form. Like, I think that's probably one of... That's, like, my favorite... That that might be my favorite, uh... Damashi, so far, honestly. Because, I mean, I don't know. Like, it'd be a magic theme park. Like, that's already going to give me. And, uh... I mean, of course, I still have to see a bunch of other things. But I really like Houdini. Yeah. But yeah, that's all I have to say. Alright. Ronald, Anthony? Um, other than everything else said, I guess I guess the um the little hint that Canon might have a different view of the Gamma world than what Makoto had. That yeah. is interesting to me. Yeah. I want to forward more. She's all buddy buddy with Alan, but Makoto, nah, he ain't having it. Like, nah, that's my sister right there, man. Can't <laughs> <laughs> be touching right my, like touchin my fan, pal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, I think that's all we got here. Mm -hmm. On that yeah. note, uh, we are Tokyo Secrets, a byproduct of AnimeSecrets.org. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, under Anime Secrets. Um, we're also on YouTube, Anime Secrets TV. I am your host, Rizwan, and we bid you all a fair uh, night, and until next time. Oh, yeah, that's on me. Love you guys. <laughs> hey, you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. You can also check out Anime Secrets on Twitter, Tumblr, and Facebook. Do you want more than that? I know you do. Then go to our website where you can see daily updates and articles and exclusive interviews.